look, that's fine. I'm just going to add. Placement is in the orphanage. What was that like? Well, that's an interesting, now, uh, I have an, an interesting answer because it has very good in many respects and very bad in other respects. It was very good in the sense that, again, I'm going back to the Depression. So we were fed well. We weren't bullied, you know, like even Oliver Twist or something. Uh, we weren't physically abused. Uh, we weren't emotionally abused as such. But times were <coughs> tough. I lived in a cottage with about 20, 30 boys, and the older boys beat the hell out of the younger boys. Were they all, or, I mean, everybody was orphanage, or were there any? Only, well, orphans, either full orphans or like off that. orphans. Right. There right. probably were, but I wasn't cognizant of it, so I really can't answer it. Uh, children of the nature and welfare now, but probably not. No, it, no, it was an orphanage. Mm -hmm. It came from the old orphanage, which was in Woodland or something, mm -hmm. of whose famous graduate was Maury Seltzman, who became a multi-millionaire, Bobby Brooks. Mm -hmm. So when I entered Belfair in 1934, it had really was new, a carryover from the old Jewish orphan home. It's otherwise known as J O H. So when when I get notices of alumni, it's the J O H Alumni Society because many of the brethren had been in the old orphan home. And what was the old orphan home? The Jewish orphan home. The Jewish oh, orphan oh, home. Oh, okay. And it was tough. Our, our, Belfair was in University of Shaker Heights, brand new building, and we went to public schools, like I went to Fairfax and Monticello, which I didn't like. I was the only Jewish kid in the class. And Heights High School. But in the old... Yeah, you went to Fairfax and then Monticello. Yeah. Interesting that you didn't go to Roosevelt. Let me tell you, son, something yeah. interesting, which you wouldn't realize, except now you would. In, in my childhood, there was a thing called busing. There had to be. You were far from so, those schools. So it didn't matter, no, and I, I don't know how I got... But I guess maybe Roosevelt was after your time there. It must have been. No, sir. There no. was the following. No. There was Fairfax, Roxborough, uh, some other school, all in the Heights, <coughs> Heights area, Cleveland Heights. But junior high was Monticello, Roxboro, and Roosevelt. And most of the Jewish children went to Roosevelt. Yeah. But that was irrelevant with the busing. Some went to Roxboro, and that was a nice junior high school. And then so there was been more likely that you would you should have gone to Roxboro than who was than who was making this up where you were located. I'm surprised. Really Some went about that. Uh, more likely to go to Roxborough? Oh, absolutely. Roosevelt would have been closer. Mm -hmm. Well, Roosevelt. anyway, let's get on with the story. Well, I see, because it was on Fairmont. Okay. Fairmont. But they assigned me to Monticello, which I hated mm -hmm. I can't, from day one to the end of the day. Why did you hate it? Do you remember why? Well, I think it's for, for several reasons. One first, Jew is not going to help. Junior high school, in, in my time, for me, was not highly pleasurable. It was tough. Uh, I was one of the, the I was one of the uh, minority from an orphan home, carrying a little brown bag, and where the other children were <coughs> carrying the brown bag, there were other guys with brown bags. There were very few. This is my memory of it. Very few children from Belfair at Monticello, and Monticello was in a totally dense wasp area. So here's this little sensitive Jewish boy with his little brown bag in a wasp pot. You know, it's funny because... And I was sensitive anyway. Roxborough was in a very wasp You mentioned... Well, but Roxborough was a step up. What's you, funny is, is I had the best thing... Didn't change. Not, the best thing for me was <laughs> I hated Monticello and loved Roxborough. And I forgot that you were Monticello. You, know, you made... You just made a point about Judaism... And you said you were bar mitzvah actually a moment ago. I so was bar mitzvah, and I had a big time bar mitzvah. In the sense that when I say big time, there were several boys in my bar mitzvah class, and they lined us up by brilliance. And I was not number one, but I was it's a Hertz or Avis. I was the second in command, and I was truly bar mitzvah. What temple? And I learned my bar mitzvah part like Baruch What temple? What temple? The temple was Belfair. Okay. Bell Fair, every, every Friday night we went to services. You had to be dressed up, showered, cleaned up. Wow. 
Every Saturday morning we went to service. During the week we went to Hebrew school. And and it wasn't it was real discipline. If you didn't do the right thing, the punishment, at least to my situation, was not seeing my mother. That was cruel and unusual. The punishment for me, well, there was emotional abuse. Of that I mean, that is you know, emotional abuse. In those days, it was. It wasn't. It was. Think we told your mother he was abused in those days. That's about a. Well, actually, beat you. My famous story was in the old days on Fairmont Boulevard, where I don't know how to, where that would be now, but there were some stores. There still are the stores. Warnsville? No, no. No, no by no, Taylor. They, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Some, to the left. Not even by Taylor. It was whatever. I was awful fair on Boulevard. There were some stores. And I stole a packet of first aid. No. First aid. Of first of a of pop. Kool Aid. Kool Aid. There we go. I was getting a little dramatic hit by my now wife Ruth. <laughs> and I was caught stealing Kool Aid. Mm. Stealing the Kool Aid, which I think cost a nickel. It wasn't cheap. And the punishment was not to see my mother for at least a month or maybe two months. Oh, man. That was so. I let me tell you, folks, I never stole anything since, even though now I can't see my mother. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. No, but that, 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 but I didn't, that you point that out. Yeah, but it, only in retrospect does it see it through, because Belfair did dish out punishments of that nature, as I recall. Did you go on with? Jewish studies past bar mitzvah? The answer is, in fact, absolutely no way, Jose. <laughs> but I did learn Hebrew. I mean, I, but you I, were not confirmed. You did not go through confirmation. Uh, Belfair did have confirmation, but I didn't because at that point uh, I, I was voluntarily discharged because I was able to get out of the home. I was working on Sundays. And how did that decision get made? Who made that decision? I don't, I don't recall. Because and where did you go then? I left Belfair? Yeah. Well, I was 15, and I don't recall except for one thing. My mother found an apartment on Superior near Mayfield. Very reasonable. And she worked in a dress shop, and I worked um, in a, uh, after school. I worked every afternoon, every afternoon uh, out on the west side at Manny Weisberger's um, shoe store. And I worked Saturday. Well, Sunday at Meyer, Unc, Meyer, whatever, you know, in the Jewish area of Glenville. What was it? I did work Saturday. What was Meyer? A shoe store. Oh. Okay. Uh, and I did work Saturday in, I, in the yeah. in the West Side. And it was I right worked every day of the week. Right, right where the so West with Side that is. money and with oh, my mother's cool. income, <laughs> can I see that? Yeah. We were able to exist, you know, and <clears> so <throat> it was nice. I had an own bedroom and it was living. Yeah. Uh, various times when we've had gatherings, there's been this woman that's been a long, long, long-term oh. friend of yours. You mean that Sarah? I went back to Belfair with you, but... Well, you, you mean know Sarah and about? Izzy? Can't, uh, Izzy, uh, Izzy uh, Sarah and Izzy Block? No. 